You've been hailed as a hero in the community. You know, I loved this headline from the Toronto Star article that featured you that said, the man who took on Amazon, closed schools, and defied expectations. So Lawrence, how do you feel right now when you look back and reflect on everything that has happened? You know, it's, it's a question that I've sort of worked through myself, Shi, and uh, I, I think uh, what I am fond of saying is that I don't think any of us really anticipated that we'd be living in a global pandemic, uh, you know, in our lifetimes. Um, but I often tell people that uh, I, I more than most have a, <laughs> certainly a story that seems unusual. Uh, first and foremost, my first day on the job was March 14th, 2020. Um, and so if everyone remembers what was happening as the, as the world was, uh, was changing before our eyes, um, you know, I had the, uh, you know, the good fortune, as it were, uh, and the privilege of serving a community uh, as acting medical officer of health following my predecessor's departure. You know, but besides that, the, you know, there's a bunch of other, you know, ironic, serendipitous sort of things that just sort of fell into place. Uh, I used to be very interested in doing uh, work uh, globally. Uh, I was uh, very involved with the World Medical Association, with the, you know, did some uh, work with the World Health Association, Health Organization, but uh, ultimately found my way back to Canada and had always said, well, if there's one health unit I want to work at, uh, it would be uh, the region appeal. And so in a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy, uh, ended up back here after, um, after essentially a little bit of a tour of all three levels of government. I worked in Ottawa for a bit, worked in BC, uh, came back and worked at the province here in Ontario for some time before landing at Peel uh, under Dr. Eileen de Villa, who many of you also know as a, as a tremendous leader uh, in the city of Toronto through the pandemic. So uh, serendipity one, bringing me back to Peel. Serendipity two was just as the pandemic was unfolding, uh, I actually was the one uh, associate medical officer health appeal that was actually outside the pandemic. Uh, I was uh, supposed to keep the the rest of the health unit uh, on lock uh, while everyone else uh, rushed into uh, the growing uh, the growing emergency response. And so I thought to myself, okay, well, I I guess this COVID nineteen nineteen thing will will blow past, and I'll. Uh, I'll be the you know the designated survivor with the leftover, <laughs> the leftover uh, portfolios to bring the health unit back to life, uh, but that actually gave me uh, also uh, in, in Jessica's departure um, the opportunity to really step into the acting role because then I just really needed to learn the COVID stuff, and then of course starting on March thirteenth, uh, March fourteenth, twenty twenty, uh, but the long story short is I I often feel like I. I wasn't really meant to be here, um, but I've been incredibly well supported uh, by an amazing team, an amazing council, an amazing community. Um, and that has given me the confidence to lead and within my mandate, uh, take the steps that I needed to uh, for the context of the community that I ended up serving. Mm, how amazing. And Lawrence, if you had a second chance, you know, going back to that day when you first took uh, office, would you have done anything differently? You know, I think the the you know it's it's inter it's an interesting question. Um, I I think the first thing I would have done uh, was I and, and you know if if I could have uh, was to actually reach out earlier to community leaders. That's definitely something that uh, you know I think in the first wave of the pandemic uh, and and throughout the throughout this whole thing, public health has uh, essentially been uh, you know really. Uh, I have to speak, you know, my staff and leadership uh, team have gone to heroic heights. Uh, just the, I, I, I don't think any of us have ever worked this hard in our entire life. And just the, the sacrifices and the work of our team. And, and I think a lot of the, the really uh, uh, significant um, decisions and recommendations that had to come out of, uh, of all the work has, you know, certainly taken its toll over time. Um, but within the first wave, I think, you know, we were all, uh, I was a new leader. Uh, we were trying our best to really understand so many unknowns around this disease, around where it's spreading, around how it's transmitting. And then, of course, once we got that data, we started to discover that there were disparities and inequities. Uh, if anything, COVID-19 has basically amplified extant disparities and inequities within our community. Uh, but it wasn't until I started hearing from other community agencies and other leaders who were saying, hey, you know, we actually can help you out with this stuff. Like there's actually stuff going on there um, that I realized that obviously coming in as a new leader and in the midst of an emergency, my focus had been very much on, you know, where the, the big fires, where's the fire at, who are these uh, folks? And so I was really grateful that so many, so many amazing community agencies, leaders from different cultural groups, different religious groups, different, you know, different sectors within the community had actually just reached out to, to help me um, and ultimately help our team. Um, and that's how we managed to get through the rest of the waves uh, together. But uh, I think if I had to do something differently, uh, I would have probably picked up the phone and called a lot more different people that um, 
that I hadn't had the opportunity to meet yet at, at the very beginning of, of the whole thing, for sure. Great learning, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no doubt. And, and I think the reality is, you know, I think one of the functions of a public health physician uh, when you speak for your community is you need to be connected mm -hmm. with those community groups. You need to be uh, on the ground and engaging to understand how the health issues, how the data plays out uh, in day-to-day -day life. Uh, but like I said, I think for me, it was just the fact that, you know, in the first wave of the pandemic, uh, you know, we were just uh, trying our best to, to keep the lid on, as it were. Um, but sometimes it is easier to keep the lid on if you have a little more help. And I think maybe that was the biggest lesson that I took away.